So we have an interesting complex numbers challenge here. We have a square in the complex plane with vertices at 1, i, negative 1, and negative i. We want to prove that for any two complex numbers, z1 and z2 within the square, the product z1, z2 is also going to be within the square. When I first read this problem, actually I thought it should be very straightforward. We just use polar form, right? So multiply the lengths and add the angle. Let's say z1 here is r1 cis theta 1 and z2 r2 cis theta 2. The product then we just multiply r1 r2 and add the angles theta 1 and theta 2. And we know that r1 and r2 are both less than 1, okay, because it's within this square. So definitely these complex numbers are both within a circle um, of radius 1. So that's enough to guarantee that the product r1 r2 is going to be less than 1. Uh, but actually it's not enough to guarantee that it's going to be within this square. So the problem is actually harder than I initially thought. I encourage you to pause the video, have a think about it, have a play around with it, and come back when you're ready. So we can simplify the problem a bit by imagining, let's say Z1 is up here. Okay, if Z1 is up here at I, that is one cis 90 degrees. And then think of what would happen to the product Z1, Z2. Z2 we can place anywhere. Z1, Z2 will be equal to, as we've said before, R1, R2, cis theta one, plus theta 2. In this case, uh, R1 is 1 and theta 1 is 90 degrees. So this will just be R2 cis 90 plus theta 2. On the diagram, what's going to happen to Z2? It's going to move around exactly 90 degrees. Okay, this is 90 degrees. So Z1, Z2 is going to be exactly 90 degrees around from Z2. And the distance from the origin is going to be exactly the same uh, as Z2. Okay, it's just R2. R2 times 1. So looking at that, what we can see is the product there uh, is exactly the sort of same distance away from the edge of the square as Z2 was. Because we've just rotated it around by 90 degrees. Um, and the square is actually rotationally symmetrical by 90 degrees. We could rotate the square by 90 degrees and you wouldn't know anything had happened. So we can say, for example, that um, whether r cis theta is within the square is going to be exactly the same as r cis theta plus 90 degrees. Okay, it doesn't matter if we add 90 degrees or subtract 90 degrees or subtract any multiple of 90 degrees. Because of the symmetry of the square, um, the distance from the point to the edge of the square is going to be the same. That's actually really useful because now we can simplify our problem a little bit. And no matter where z1, z2 are, we can bring them back to the first quadrant just by subtracting a multiple of 90 degrees. So wherever our complex numbers are, we can bring them back into the first quadrant. Um, and that's really good, because what we're going to do now is assume that both our complex numbers, Z1 and Z2, are in the first quadrant. And what we're going to do now is actually use the Cartesian form, or the rectangular form. So if we assume Z1 is A plus BI, Z2 is C plus DI, and we're going to assume that A, B, C, and D are all positive because we're in the first quadrant. Um, also, we can know that A plus B is less than 1, and C plus D is less than 1. Uh, why is that? Because we know that these points are within this uh, square, or this triangle here. And if we look at this line, this line would have the equation y equals negative x plus 1 or uh, x plus y equals 1. If we know that we're below this line, we know that our x plus y is less than 1. All right, and then we're going to consider the product actually in Cartesian form. So z1, z2, it's going to be a plus bi 
C plus DI. And we expand out our brackets. With the I squared term, we're going to replace that by negative 1. We can group our real part as AC minus BD. And the imaginary part is AD plus BC. And what we want to show now is that we're still below this line. So we want to show that the real part plus the imaginary part is still less than 1. Okay, so this is our real part here. And this is our imaginary part. So what we can do is group the both terms with an A in them. We'll have AC plus D. And the second two terms with the B in them will have BC minus D. Um, and if we look at this, well, C minus D, we know that has to be less than C plus D. Okay, we know C minus D has to be less than C plus D uh, because C and D are both positive here, we've assumed that. So then we can group our terms and factorize and say this is less than A plus B times C plus D. And we already uh, assumed that these were both less than one. So therefore the product must also be less than one. Pretty good, right? But we're not quite done yet. I wonder if you can see why. It might help to look at the diagram. Um, and if we multiply Z1 and Z2, you know, especially if I move Z, Z1 round a little bit, uh, it could be the case that when I multiply Z1 and Z2, the product is actually no longer going to be in the first quadrant. So then, well, I'm not really too interested whether it, I'm below this line X plus Y is equal to one. Okay, because Z1, Z2 could be up here and still below the line X plus Y is equal to 1, but that's no good because that doesn't guarantee I'm inside the square. So now I need to consider this line. Now this line has the equation Y equals X plus 1. I can rewrite that as Y minus X equal to 1. If I want to be below that line, then I'll need to have a Y minus X to be less than 1. So I need y minus x to be less than 1, or the imaginary part of our product minus the real part to be less than 1. So again, we can take our expressions from over here. And then I have to show that AD plus BC minus AC minus BD is less than 1. Hopefully a similar trick as what we've used over here would also work. Let's see if we group our A terms again. So our left hand side, um, we can group our A terms and our B terms like this. Again, we know D minus C is less than C plus D. Uh, which is great, that also guarantees that we're less than this line, which means our product is within the square. So there we are. If the two complex numbers are in the first quadrant, then their product must lie within the square. Um, and together with the observation before about the rotational symmetry, that we can bring any complex number from any quadrant back into the first quadrant by subtracting a multiple of 90 degrees is enough to prove uh, that the product must be within the square. Actually, when I first saw this problem on Stack Exchange, uh, the problem was posed about a, a polygon in the complex plane. So it's actually a bit more complex, <laughs> a bit more general than the problem we've seen here. And I'll leave a link to that if you're interested. Stop, Bubba. What? You, this is still copying people. Yeah, so you can hear what you're saying. Ah. Uh, uh, you explain it well. Okay, so I want to tell you that...